This video presents an easy and reliable method for reprogramming human fibroblasts into induced pluripotent stem cells using ReproRNA OKSGM. OK we'll be demonstrating how to use ReproTeaser neonatal human dermal fibroblasts and the ReproRNA OKSGM OK non-integrating vector system. The reprogramming protocol can be broken down into three steps, transfection, induction, and selection. The ReproRNA OKSGM OK self-replicating vector only requires a single transfection. For transfection, we recommend using our ReproRNA transfection reagent. Simply mix the ReproRNA OKSGM OK vector in a tube with the transfection reagents and incubate for 5 minutes. Take your previously plated somatic cells on a major gel or vitronectin XF coated plate and replace the somatic cell medium with growth medium containing B18R. Add the ReproRNA vector and transfection reagent mix dropwise onto the cells. Gently rock the plate for even distribution. After one day, begin the selection process with growth medium containing pyromycin and B18R. Change the medium daily for six days. At seven days post-transfection, replace the medium with ReproTeaser containing B18R and continue changing the medium daily for the remainder of the induction phase. Over the next several weeks, iPS cell colonies will begin to form. When reprogramming fibroblasts, the cells will change shape, appearing more rounded as the mesenchymal to epithelial transition occurs. Around day eight to nine, small epithelial-like cells will begin to appear. Around day 14 to 16, these cells will have developed into small clusters of tightly packed pre-IPS cell colonies. And by three to four weeks, large colonies with ES cell-like morphology will be present. In addition to fully reprogrammed IPS cell colonies, differentiated colonies and partially reprogrammed colonies may be present in your cultures. It is important to accurately distinguish between fully and partially reprogrammed iPS cell colonies to ensure successful selection and clonal expansion of the selected clones. Fully reprogrammed iPS cell colonies generated with ReproRNA and ReproTeaser will display the morphological characteristics of embryonic stem cell colonies. That is, they should have distinct borders. Cells should be tightly packed with prominent nucleoli and have a high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. To isolate the iPS cell colonies, either a pulled glass pipette or a 22 gauge needle is recommended. Colony isolation should be performed using a microscope in sterile conditions. Sometimes the colonies you want to select may contain differentiated cells or fibroblast overgrowth. These unwanted cell types should be removed from colonies prior to isolation. Drag the needle or pipette around the iPS cell colony to separate the fibroblasts or other unwanted cells from the undifferentiated iPS cells you are selecting. Use of ReproTeaser will generate cultures with fewer fibroblasts and differentiated cells, minimizing the need for manual removal of these cell types. To then isolate the selected iPS cell colonies, Drag the needle across the colony, up and down, making a grid. Lift and collect the colony fragments with a 200 microliter micropipette and transfer to a new culture dish. The dish should be pre-coated with Matrogel or Vitronectin XF and contain M-Teaser or Teaser E8. IPS cell lines generated in ReproTeaser and then subcultured in M-Teaser or Teaser E8 typically contain very low levels of differentiated cells as early as passage 2 and are therefore ready for banking and characterization earlier than iPS cell lines generated with other methods. Successful generation of new iPS cell lines should display normal karyotype, express undifferentiated cell markers, and differentiate to all three germ layers using either in vitro assays or a teratoma assay. 
For more information about ReproRNA, ReproTeaser, and our other products for pluripotent stem cell research, please visit stemcell.com.